How's it going, everybody? This is your moderator, Chris McCurdy, coming to you this week with our Presbyterians Connected video, where we are um, sharing a little bit of ourselves and our communities from all over our presbytery, gathering together, going through this time uh, as one community, one people following after Christ. Uh, I have an excellent guest today who I'm so excited uh, to either uh, welcome on or introduce to you. Um, but I wanted to start with a scripture passage. It's actually from the lectionary text for this week. Um, and I just thought it was so beautiful. I wanted to share it with everybody. So the word comes today from Acts chapter 2 verses 42 through 47. Hear now the word of the Lord. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles, and all who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all, as had need. Day by day, as they spent time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people, day by day the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. My guest today is the illustrious, the brand new, and the never been duplicated um, Reverend Brett Foote, who has joined us from UPC Superior on this beautiful day. Brett, welcome. How are you doing? I'm doing great, Chris. Thanks for having me. And hello to the rest of the Presbytery, if we haven't met yet. Yes, Brett is, um, for all those who don't know, has it been, has it been a year? It'll be not a year July. Year. July yeah, July. not quite a year. So a year in July. Um, if you haven't had the chance to meet Brett, he is absolutely delightful. And since he's new, you can tell him that certain things are the way that things are done, and he'll just go ahead and do them for you. So make sure you haze him properly um, into the presbytery. But Brett, tell us a little bit about yourself um, yeah. and also your wife while you're at it, too. We don't want to forget your better half. Yes, absolutely. Well, um, Chris, I am originally from Savannah, Georgia, was born in the South, but spent most of my life in the Northeast in Pennsylvania, kind of near Lancaster, Pennsylvania, a little bit. And uh, in that space, I did my undergrad and, and then I worked as a director of student and young adult ministries. And after a number of years there, I felt the, the call of God to call of the Holy Spirit specifically to end up at Princeton Theological Seminary. Uh, this is where, a Presbyterian video, you know, right? You shouldn't mention the Holy Spirit. Well, I know, I know, but <laughs> unlike Columbia Seminary, we actually did talk about it at Princeton, uh, the, the Spirit um, and her movements. So uh, yeah, no, um, spent a number of years at Princeton and uh, spent a year during that time um, as a pastor in a, a small Methodist congregation, uh, graduated from there and now in my first call at United here on the shores of Lake Superior. Um, yeah, and United, fantastic community. Uh, it's a, a merger of three congregations that were in Superior who come together and created the most unique um, church building I have uh, seen and as far as a traditional church. Literally describe it to the community as uh, the church with three green pyramids. Um, and everyone knows uh, what, I'm, what I'm talking about. So that's a beautiful thing. Um, yeah, the community is diverse when it comes in age. We're uh, almost an exact 33% split between the, the major age demographics, and that's starting to really play out um, into our committees and things like that. And I think what this church, as I've uh, spent time with them, has been known for, and I know most of us Presbyterians are known for it, but um, my just interim predecessor, uh, Charlotte France, Reverend Charlotte France, um, sent a letter uh, back to the congregation and said, you know, I've never been a part of a church that has eaten and fellowshiped so much together in my entire ministry. And she's, she's been doing it for a long time. And uh, it's true. Um, we eat, we eat a lot and uh, we make it a point to, to help others eat as well. So I'm excited to be here. I'm loving it. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah, it is. Um, I always love going up to Superior and uh, having the chance to visit your all's church. Um, 
it's it's always uh, beautiful. And when you all hosted uh, Presbytery uh, last time, when was that? February. February. Yeah, February. Um, it was absolutely, it was so, um, welcoming and we just absolutely loved it. Um, obviously, I, yeah. I, I almost forgot to, uh, talk about Wara real quick too. Oh, yes, uh, definitely. Yeah. So, so my, uh, my spouse, Laura and I, um, uh, we're both actually a part of the Presbyterian Mission Agency's, uh, 1001 New Worshiping Communities Initiative. And so it, uh, God placed it on both of our hearts to, to start a new worshiping community that's primarily made up of and led by folks affected by disability um, in partnership uh, with the church that I'm currently serving, UPC. Um, and so Laura's kind of vision and what she does is she's a, she works as a coffee roaster. She's starting a coffee roasting business, especially okay. a coffee roasting business. And out of that roastery, uh, we hope to uh, start this new community. Um, and so she's passionate about coffee, uh, God, um, and uh, doing, uh, doing all kinds of um, good work uh, here in the community. So uh, she's a lot cooler than me. Um, I'll say that much. Uh, and I'm probably doing disservice to her. Uh, as we speak, but yeah. Yeah, no, um, the, uh, yeah, the coffee roasting um, thing, I've actually brought that up as an example um, in my own church, uh, what you all are doing with that as I think what it looks like to have a very um, solid vision for ministry, as opposed yeah. to, you know, just kind of thinking, I want to do mission work, you know, having a, a focus, something that plays into your strengths and your heart and your passion and really using that to take off. I'm, um, as bad as it sounds, I think I'm a little envious of um, your mission focus. So um, that is absolutely fantastic. Um, speaking of mission focus, you know, what has your church, what has UPC been doing in response to the pandemic? Um, what challenges do you think might be specific to, or unique to you? And um, how, how do you see your church um, really answering the need during this time? Yeah, um, I would say the way that we're answering the need, um, and this is a really good question, so thanks, Chris, um, goes back to uh, kind of the church's um, verse that it's been focusing on, the verses that it's been focusing on, which has been Jeremiah 29, 4 through 7. So if it's okay, I'll, I'll read them. Um, yeah. yeah, it's, uh, thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all the exiles whom I've sent into exile from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and live in them, plant gardens and eat what they produce, take wives and husbands, have sons and daughters, take wives, husbands for your sons, and give your daughters in marriage that they may bear sons and daughters. Multiply there and do not decrease, but seek the welfare of the city where I've sent you into exile and pray to the Lord on its behalf. For in the, its welfare, you will find your welfare. Um, and that's been a verse that we were kind of focusing in on and meditating in on before the pandemic hit, um, since I has, I've started here. And really, uh, we've just been trying to make Superior a better place for all people to live, um, not just us. And, and so what that's translated for us, uh, the welfare of the city is, like I mentioned earlier, we like to eat. So um, the staff, when, when everything kind of went down and everything got canceled, we, uh, we sat down together and we, the first comments out of my staff's mouth and my session's mouths were, um, not, you know, how are we going to put worship online? How are we going to, you know, meet? But it was, um, how are we going to care for these people who are losing their jobs and, and doing these things? And so one of those ways they thought up was the Hot Dish Initiative, which is uh, literally just a very, very small group of us um, putting gloves on, masks on, practicing social distancing, and making a ton of pre-made meals and then having a, a kind of a line of cars come up and we just put them on a table or put them right directly in the back of their vehicle and, and they head off and it's got instructions on it and it helps feed them. Um, some of the other ways that we've responded, especially about seeking the welfare of folks is that um, we've taken, we mailed our uh, uh, directories uh, to every single person that we had an address for and we said, 
your calling um, during this time is to care for the people below you if you're able in the directory. Um, and, and so what we've been doing is every week, we just touch base once a week with the people below us in the directory. Um, and we say, is there something you need? Do you need food? Do you need care? What is it? Um, and, and we've seen that work from everyone from our elders reaching out for help, um, mm -hmm. having pipes burst and getting people in there with masks and stuff to help fix those pipes to, um, we had a family in our community whose grandparents house just burnt down. So connecting with them about how to, how to go through this major loss in the midst of a pandemic. So yeah, we've been uh, just doing a number of things, but those are two things that I'd highlight as uh, ways we're tangibly trying to respond um, in the midst of this crisis. And we're doing online worship. We're, we're doing that stuff too. And um, it's messy and uh, it's great. And, you know, uh, I mess up in it a lot, but it's, it's fun. <laughs> no, that, Wow, that sounds amazing. Uh, a lot of really good stuff um, coming out of you all in Superior and, and, um, and it's just amazing to see what God can do. I mean, taking someone, you know, from Princeton that's so based in theory and not practicality like that um, and doing <laughs> real things for your community is just incredible. And I, I, you know, glory be to God for doing such miraculous things. Oh, yes. Um, <laughs> one of the things that I love about these videos is, is drawing upon these stories and these abilities to hear what you're doing and, frankly, to steal the best of them for um, our other communities. You know, um, the directory idea, what a great way to get people to contact one another. The, um, the hot dish idea, a way to attack a need right at its source. Um, have you had any experience so far as a young pastor in the presbytery um, where you really feel the strength and involvement of the larger presbytery coming in and helping you out and lifting you up? Yeah, yeah, no, um, the, the presbytery has been great. Um, I've been connecting with, uh, even before the pandemic, been connecting with other pastors and we've been bouncing ideas off each other. In fact, I meet with one of them uh, every two weeks and we've partnered in a lot of cool ways already. Um, one of those things right before uh, this all went down and we've put a little postponement on it is um, uh, Reverend Corey Larson up in the middle of uh, the end of the world. Actually, it's not the middle. It's actually at the end of the world in Ely, Minnesota. Um, it's a beautiful end of the world, but it's the end of the world. Um, uh, he called me and we were planning for a presbytery meeting that was supposed to happen in May over in Bayfield. And he's just talking to me and he's like, you know, Brett, I just, I've got a leak in my roof. I've got this going on. I've got this. And um, I said, well, what if we just came and fixed it? You know, we can, we can just partner together. And he's like, yeah, but where would we, where do we get the money and where would we do this? And um, beautiful thing is uh, with how connected we are, um, there's, there's a congregation in Duluth at Glen Avon um, with uh, Reverend Robin Weaver um, who has uh, a fund uh, to do these things. And, and we had some skilled laborers uh, here at UPC. Um, and so seeing the, church come together to be the church we we went up and we did an assessment and do those things and we sent the stuff to to Corey to send a robin and um it looks like once this is all over we're gonna be um uh, fixing up that church uh for not even half the cost of what it would have cost to, to get professionals in there and i don't want to sell my volunteer short but um it's been beautiful and that that really has provided some hope because um you know, the church, and when I've seen it at its best, um, it's right in the middle of its local communities, right? It's caring for the needs of that. And that, that, that action and that connectedness actually inspired our congregation um, to revive a new ministry or revive an old ministry where we're going to start fixing up homes here in Superior. Um, and so the connectedness and the allowance for, you know, doing ministry with each other um, being in the presbytery has actually created some new life and new energy here at UPC. Um, and that's given me incredible hope, uh, because I wouldn't have thought to revive that on my own. I wouldn't have, I didn't even know we had done it before, but, um, 
yeah, people are excited. Um, and a lot of that has to do with how connected we are. Yeah, that's incredible. That's, um, you know, drawing the best from each other, letting God move through the entire assembly. Uh, specific churches have gifts, and they're different from the gifts of other churches. So really drawing on all those different gifts as best we can is what we want to do. And uh, helping those who are less fortunate, but understanding that the less fortunate have gifts that others don't have, and, and we need them all to come into play. I want to thank you so much for joining us today, Brett. It has been great uh, getting to talk to you and just kind of building up our friendship. And um, and I always love hanging out and talking to you. So thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Chris. I'm, I'm just surprised that, you know, um, you can have the theological conversations as a Columbia grad, but, you know, it's I, I understand. I'm, I'm really impressed. And, you know, you've moved up in the tiers uh, for me in terms of seminaries. Thanks. Thanks. I want to give a parting blessing. This is specifically for UPC, but it is applicable to everybody. Um, so receive this blessing and go with peace. Oh, by the way, I should reference, I did pull this from uh, the Grace Worship Archive um, off of um, their website. So uh, I did not write this myself in case you think that I'm too smart for my own bridges. Here you go. May the God who is community be with us as we seek to be a community. May God bless our dreams and may God shatter our dreams. May God help us to be real and to find depth in weakness and brokenness. May God help us to face and grow through conflict rather than pretend to be nice. May we look at each other through soft eyes and truly respect each other as human beings. May God help us to let go of control and the need to fix one another. May God help us to discover we are needy in our own souls and to give attention to our own hearts. May God grant us the gift of extraordinary love that flows from the heart of God and covers a multitude of wrongs. Peace be with you all. Um, join us next week as we gather again. And um, if you have a need, pick up a phone and call somebody. Peace. Yeah. Blessings.